to my big tool case, you can see that I have a Craftsman uh, rolling tool chest. Uh, it's actually made of two different parts. Um, I've got the, call it the smaller uh, box here, and then the roller uh, below. Now, Craftsman has always had a very good name to me. I grew up you know, back a kid as in the 60s and 70s, and the craftsman tools have always been very sturdy. Uh, but of late, unfortunately, that is not necessarily the case. I was a little bit disappointed in the quality of this. It came to me dented. Uh, it uh, had a number of issues, and I found that the steel was not as thick as I had expected. Uh, now, you can go to Harbor Freight, and I forgot the name of the brand that they have there. It's U.S. something. Um, and for actually a less price, you probably get an equivalent type of uh, unit like this. Now, this says that it's proudly made in the USA with global materials. So, in other words, it's really not totally American. Um, I am on a push to, to buy American as best as possible. But let's uh, move on. We'll talk about specific tools for the beginners. Now, tools are, they're an addiction. You're going to start with a small set and you're going to say, oh, I've got to buy this. Oh, I've got to buy that. Um, now, I'm not going to recommend a specific brand of tools, though what I would recommend is that you get a tool set uh, that has a lifetime guarantee. For example, yes, Craftsman does have a lifetime guarantee, but at times it can be very difficult to actually replace the items that are broken. Uh, going to Harbor Freight, they have the Pittsburgh brand, for example. Uh, that has a lifetime guarantee, and my understanding is you walk into uh, one of their stores with a broken item that has a lifetime guarantee, and you know, they're going to swap it out uh, pretty quickly. Um, of course, you've got your big brands. Um, I actually like DeWalt. Uh, there's a, a number of other ones. You know, you've got the ones that are for professionals. Um, what was it? Your Mac tools. And, you know, really for most of us, uh, you know, homegrown garage monkeys, we really don't need to be spending a lot of money on tools. You can get some good sets with lifetime guarantees for cheap. But let's talk about some of the basic tools that you need, and then I'll show you some of the things that I have here. Of course, really the recommended things at a minimum, you do need hearing protection. And actually, this one here is one of many that I have, but this is my, <laughs> these are my shooting muffs. And what I like about these, number one, is uh, it has a, uh, not a transmitter, but it has a receiver in this so that I can actually hear people uh, and then it will cut out the loud sounds. But most importantly, it has a jack here um, for my cell phone so I can be listening to music at the same time and it, it works real well. And needless to say, eye protection, there you go. Uh, if you don't need to wear glasses uh, with a prescription, Definitely get a decent pair that wraps around the eyes. Um, you know, if you get some that have the shields, that's just as well. Uh, here are the ones that I generally wear. Uh, these are bifocal. <clears throat> and I'm going to get the, uh, the shields that go on the side of these when I'm doing some heavy-duty cutting. Nitrile gloves, please. Uh, if you don't want your hands to be messed up, greasy, uh, stained mess, Get yourself a box of 100. This is the 8 mil thick. I really like these. They're not that expensive. Uh, I've got a set of 6 mil. I've bought another 100 of 6 mil. And uh, they're not too bad. But for harder use, 8 mil, definitely. And, of course, some work gloves. You're going to be moving your hands around places where um, things are sharp. And if you take a look, these are, I don't even think a year old. Let's see if I can bring that in. Look what's happened to these particular gloves. These are my older pair of gloves. Um, imagine if this were your fingers. So these are the minimal things that I would recommend that you get uh, in your tool case. Now, 
I like to do a little bit of work on top of the uh, tool case here. It uh, is nice and handy for uh, you know, doing light work and stuff like that. So I do have some protection. Uh, what was nice is that this rubber mat uh, came with this set and every single drawer happens to have this, uh, this rubber mat. So let's look at the top. And as you can see, what I have done, uh, I don't know if it's going to be in focus, but I have a label maker. So this one says uh, pliers, crescents, and cross cutters. But there's a lot more in it than that. I do keep my keys for my tractor, uh, my storage um, shed out back. Uh, but I do have a number of things in here. And uh, these were acquired over the years, so there's a mismatch of, of things. Uh, some of it is just the generic... Um, you know, here's a, here's a Sears crescent wrench, an adjustable crescent wrench. And I've got quite a number of crescent wrenches of, uh, of different sizes. And again, these are acquired over the years. You'll just uh, pick some up. These are alloy steel, uh, not super uh, durable. But for what I do, I don't need a lot. This is actually a small, oops, I've got something still in the, the jaws of this one did a little work here so we got ourselves one of these and this is something I inherited from my father and again different uh, pliers uh, cobalt I actually like I had acquired this just to see I've never had a cobalt before and I've been told that cobalt is actually a very good uh, name brand uh, this is just some generic Chinese made uh, as I call them, made out of Chineseium uh, got a tape measure here. Uh, here's a tire gauge. So some miscellaneous stuff. Uh, some cross cutters. Uh, I use the old term dykes, uh, so it gets pretty offensive. <laughs> and of course, some needle nose pliers, uh, some hemostats, uh, more needle nose pliers. Um, and then I do keep my Black & Decker drill screw set in here as well. So that's what I keep in the top. We're going to move down now. And let's take a look at the screwdriver drawer. And as you can see, I have an assortment of screwdrivers. <clears throat> I've got the Phillips head, different, different sizes, all the way down to smaller, even teeny tiny. I keep my Loctite in here as well. Very important. Always have some Loctite handy. I used it twice yesterday. Um, securing my uh, my shifter knob and being that I have a camera on my mirror uh, in my Mustang uh, that is weighing it down a little bit so I'm trying to figure out how to uh, keep my mirror from going Pfft. all right now here's two interesting items I actually inherited these from my father uh, from his tool case uh, nice little pick let's see if I can get that where you can see it uh, nice little pick this comes in handy on a lot of things. And this I really like. This is a magnet and it's extendable. So you get that screw that falls. Well, you just pull this puppy out and you can get it with little issue. Here you go. And this I inherited from my father, too. I always loved it as a kid. I wish I could find the one that was a Phillips, but uh, you know, it's ratcheting and it can get into tight places. Love to find out uh, where I can get some more of those. I think I've seen them. I've just been too lazy to buy more. Uh, I've got plans for other things. So a lot of different screwdrivers. Um, in here and different sizes a few back there that are are really big now you're gonna find that some of the tools are made out of uh, if I pronounce it right it's chrome that then didium then didium something like that and it's an okay metal but it's really for light use so if you have anything made out of that be very careful because you're really gonna you know you'll get a screwdriver that's made out of that uh, chrome then didium and just you're you're gonna you're gonna ruin them real quick. So start off with a good set of screwdrivers. 
Um, again, get some of the ones that have the lifetime guarantee. Uh, moving down to my next, we just did the screwdrivers. Uh, this is going to be my brushes, files, trim tools. And just a lot of different things in this one here. You can see the trim tools. Uh, I actually got a trim tool set that uh, also included all the clips. And I'll show you the clips uh, down below. But I have my files, uh, trim tool remover. I have brushes. Uh, brushes come in handy. Uh, wire brushes. Uh, scissors. Uh, these particular rollers here, this is what I used to put the sound pad uh, under my rug. Um, it was a, the sound and heat insulation. And so I bought those and, you know, really it was a one-off uh, thing. If I ever do another car, I do have them, but who knows? A couple of the things I inherited from my dad. Here's a, an awl. I mean, look, look how worn that is from use, but it's it's just holding out. I'm trying to see what brand it is. It's made in the USA. Um, no, it's a Stanley, but this thing has to be at least, oh, if not 40 years, 50 years old. Now this is really cool. This is probably at least 40 years old. Uh, here's some micrometers and they, this this still works. This is something that you really don't need just this yet unless you do some fine work. Again, this is some of the things I inherited from my dad. And here you go. You know, another thing that I inherited from my father. Um, you know, good, for, good for measuring. This was actually made in Germany. You want something accurate, get it made in Germany. That's some good product there. And I've got some various cutters in here pens and stuff like that. So another cheap tape measure made in China. Uh, if that breaks, who cares? I think I got that for free. Now, one thing that I do recommend is when you're looking for tools, sure, you can buy them new, but I would go around to the different uh, yard sales, uh, especially ones, uh, what do they call them? Some estate sales. You get the estate sales and these folks that have, have passed on or older, and they'll have some of the older tools. They'll have those craftsmen that were made 100% in the United States. And you'll get them really, really inexpensively. Uh, moving on down, this is my, my fun drawer here. So I've got some, uh, some Velcro straps of different colors. You can always use Velcro straps. Um, you know, here's some tie wraps. A couple OBD readers. Different types of tape, black tape, double sticky tape. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, not nylon tape, but the tape that you use for pipe. So this is the PTFE thread, thread tape. I've got a couple of those. Uh, multimeter, very handy to have a multimeter. This one is not very expensive. I think I paid, I don't know, 15 or $20 for this. Um, I don't use them that super often. But, you know, you can always get a fluke meter and pay hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. But for what we do as garage mechanics, that'll do the trick. Now, I told you about the, uh, the trim tools. Now, this came with my trim tool. I actually paid, I think, $17. It's on sale uh, on Amazon for $14, call it $15. That included these... Uh, plastic trim tool, the, the larger metal trim tool that you see here. It included all that, 415 pieces. This is great for all the various trim and things like that. So what I wound up doing, let me see the one, I believe it was this one here. I just put a cover on my battery and the type of um, fastener that was in it was, was this type here. It was a little bit more difficult to get out. But I figured, you know, if I'm away from somewhere and I need to get that cover off real quick, this particular universal went in really easy, comes out really easy. So let me open that up. So you can see all the various pieces of trim fasteners, plastic fasteners that you have. 
So this is the one that just looks like a, just pushes right in. So good thing to have if you're doing a restoration on your car. Uh, here I've got some shrink wrap, uh, shrink tubing I should say, not shrink wrap. And this is where you apply some heat to it. And it'll shrink. I've used that, for example, when I was doing my stereo system because I had, oh, I don't know how many different uh, wires that I had to, uh, to solder together. And I do have a soldering iron and a soldering station elsewhere. And then here are different uh, electrical connectors that you crimp on. There you go. So I call them vampire taps. So you could take this, it goes onto one wire, and then you can see it looks like a plug there. So then you would take, well, let's just do a blue one. Then you take that that has a spade connector. Let's see if I get that angled right. And that spade connector would go right into the side. So very easy to connect wires. I used that when I was redoing, um, I added fog lights to, the, uh, to my Mustang and uh, also changed out my headlights. So the vampire taps worked very, very well. That way you're not cutting and splicing the, the wires. And let's put these back in here before we go down below. Everything I try and keep as organized as possible. Okay, moving on down, we're going to go to where my wrenches are. And as you can see, I've got a number of different things. Here's another crescent wrench. This is a big mama that I inherited from my father. Unfortunately, it came uh, pretty much banged up like this. Now, one of the things that I prefer to do with my tools is I wipe them down after I use them. And usually, my rag has a little bit of oil on it and that'll help prevent the different rust. Now the set that I have for my box wrenches uh, are DeWalt and I have a couple different types here. I have the regular box, box wrench uh, both in the standard uh, US measurement and metric but what I also have if I get that back in is one that is also ratcheting. So that makes things kind of nice there as well. And I go down to the small size. As you can see, I do have a hammer in there. I do have a rubber mallet. Uh, I do have some Allen wrenches as well. Um, do have a smaller tacking hammer. Uh, and some other various pieces that just fit in there. Uh, that was from during my years of being on a bicycle, uh, doing a road bike, tweezers. So that's some of the wrenches that I have, but I definitely recommend that you start off with a decent set of box wrenches. DeWalt has a mechanic set, a starter mechanic set. Um, it was fairly inexpensive that included the box wrenches, it included sockets, it included Allen wrenches, it included screwdrivers. So a good starting set. I believe that, um, you know, let's see, the Pittsburgh has a set that I think was, well, it was definitely under $100 and if it's on sale, um, you can get like 20% off of that. Uh, and those do have the lifetime warranties. Now, you're gonna notice something interesting that I do get the black um, pieces a lot of times I couldn't get it in the in the ratcheting but mainly I get those because my eyes are shot and sometimes I just find it difficult to be able to read depending on the light I can't quite read the sizes so one of the reasons why I got the black is because of the contrast All right, and here is the socket set. And you can see I have a lot of different sockets. Actually, I have a whole lot more than this. I've got 
a set that I inherited from my father, and also the DeWalt set that I got has a lot of smaller ones that I just find to either A, be too small, or B, I already have the sizes uh, available to me, say in the, in the deep socket set, and I really didn't want to have duplicates. Yeah, some are deep, some are shallow. Uh, I don't know. So let's see what else I have here. So I've, I've got some big sockets. I go up to uh, 24 millimeter. I actually just had to buy that 24 millimeter when I was doing um, my steering wheel. So that was a, a recent purchase. And various size ratchets uh, ranging from quarter inch to half inch in size. And a recent pur purchase here, as I like to call it, uh, this is my Ugga Dugga. So you go, whoop, 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 Ugga Dugga 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 Dugga. Uh, so this is my air ratchet wrench. And that I'll use for uh, stuff that I just can't get off. And also, of course, for my tires. And I'll be doing a video when I replace my wheel set uh, coming up. I do have um, some other types of uh, adapters here. So I can put this in my, uh, my electric um, driver, and I can go up to half inch on that as well. And let's see what else we have here. Oh, yes. I do have Torx wrenches. So this is something if you're working on most cars, in particular the Mustang, you will need Torx wrenches. Uh, in that box over there are actually uh, ones that go on to my electric driver. Uh, or it will fit on the ratchet so I can do it manually as well. But sometimes you just get the ones where, you know, this just doesn't have enough oomph to get off. So there you go. That pretty much completes um, the various tools that I have. Uh, now, underneath here, let's see if I can get this. Oh, let's bring this down a little bit. This is my... My power tool garage, pardon me, I'm going to lift this off and come on down. So here are some of my power tools. As you can see here, I do have the standard drill and uh, screwdriver, electric impact wrench, and I've got a sander. I've got a circular saw in here, uh, back there, angle grinder, and I think a sawzall. Yes, a sawzall is back there. I don't know if you can see the sawzall back there. I happen to like Ryobi products. I actually got these fairly inexpensively. Uh, they were a return. I got them on Amazon. They were refurbished, and I've had them for... Oh, I think I'm three or four years now and have done very well with it. So let's move up here. A couple more things. Here is my detail bag. And as you can see, I'm big on labeling things. Uh, so I can just pick this bag up. I can take it anywhere. And, you know, I've got scrub brushes. I've got sponges back here, some smaller. So this is when I do a cars and coffee or something like that. Some new car smell. So make everything smell nice. Uh, leather scent. So if anybody needs a hand, uh, I've got that there. I do keep uh, my microfibers uh, in a little tray over here as well. Now, what I also have, let me bring this up a little bit. This is my charger for the battery. Uh, I tend to be stupid a lot of times, keep the doors open and drain my battery. I usually forget to disconnect my battery. Um, so I have the battery charger. It's nice as a tender and I got a very long amount of wire. So that goes right to the automobile behind me. And then 
This is a vacuum. This is a MetroVac uh, made in the USA. Uh, funny thing is, it, it does have pretty good suction, but uh, I still find that my shop vac I use most of the time. That's on the other side of my garage as well. And as soon as I pull my car in, I get the shop vac, turn it on, and just uh, clean out my car every single time. I do have 50 feet of hose here, and I put it on a uh, holder for a garden hose. Uh, so I actually can just pull a car up outside of my garage and uh, vacuum the inside and have plenty of room. So that is really the main tools that I have. I do have a drill press behind the scenes and uh, I've got many other, many other tools that I've acquired over the years. And you figure I've been acquiring tools for, well, gee, at least 30, 30 40 years. Uh, so I've got some good stuff here. And I'm sure I'm going to build more. Actually, I've got um, a few more tools coming in uh, for my air system. And I'll, I'll go over what I have for my air system in a little bit. Uh, that'll be another video. But other than that, you know, take your time. Get some decent tools that you can have for a lifetime. Uh, and, you know, you're just going to have fun doing your own work not only on your car but if you purchase a home you'll be able to just do easy work on your home and these tools if you play the game right will actually pay you back many times over so take care of your tools treat them with respect they will treat you with respect i know that sounds really strange to say but it's very true and with that, hey, make it a great day. May the Lord richly bless you. And let's just wrench together and we're going to share some blood, sweat, and gears.